Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you in here to Silver Dollar Motorsports Park for the Southeast Gasser kickoff of the 2023 World Championship season. There you see the beautiful facility here at Silver Dollar Motorsports Park in Reynolds, Georgia. DH Media, our new media partner, bringing you these incredible shots that you're going to see here today. We're going to start out here. First round of uh, racing is going to be in our super stock category, as always. And leaving off right where he left off in 2022, our world champion, Rick Varner. He is going to be the number one qualifier here today in that Dirt Man 1967 Camaro. See some of the beautiful shots right there of the driver's meeting that is taking place. We've got a lot of new guys, a lot of new faces out here for this 2023 season, as well as some veteran faces that you'll see around. There's Tim Hall, the Seagas World Champion from last year out of Abbeville, South Carolina, in that beautiful uh, 67 Rambler. Guy who was tied for the points championship in B Gas, Daniel Haynes. There you see a qualifying pass he made, getting a little out of the groove. And uh, the B-Gas World Champion last year was Colby Welch in that Moonbeam Ranch Arrow. Then in A-Gas, you had Leslie Horn, the chick magnet. He took home the honors there in A-Gas. So these guys are looking to defend this year, but there's a lot of new faces and a lot of new places as we get ready for round number one of eliminations. There's Steve Davis, first to the line, the number four qualifier here today, going to take on the number five qualifier in K.J. Phillips. K.J. Phillips out of Campobello, South Carolina. Steve Davis out of Monroe, North Carolina, in a Ford Falcon, a little bit of a different trim for him as he always ran a uh, little Chevy 2 when he won the A-Gas Championship in 2020. But he streaks on to the win right here in his first round of Superstock Racing. 2021 world champion right there. That is Ron Allison in Poppy's Toy taking on his neighbor and friend, Randy Kiefer in the Spine Tingler. These guys qualified Kiefer in the sixth spot, Allison in the three spot. And like I said, they are from the same hometown right there in Cookville, Tennessee. And Ron Allison gets a little bit of a start right there on him at the line. Is that gonna be enough? No, Randy Kiefer powers by in that big Pontiac Chieftain to take the win. Here's a newcomer, Jerry Dean in Superstock with his first ever elimination run against Todd Oden out of Birmingham, Alabama. And Jerry Dean gonna take the win right there. Congratulations to him in his first round of Superstock racing. There is the aforementioned 2022 champ, the Dirt Man, Rick Varner out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. He sits there in the left lane, gonna be taking on Don Wilmot in his 66 Mustang in the right lane. Varner pulling double duty here today. Going to run A-Gas as well as Superstock. Let's see how he fares with that. Right there it says it, 2022 Superstock champion. And he is going after it again this year. Here the number one qualifier. And he takes the win right here in round number one of Superstock and moves on where he'll take on Steve Davis in round number two. Moving into C-Gas action, that is going to be Matthew Miller right there in the Hell's Bell. He's out of Warner Robins, Georgia. He's the number 14 qualifier, taking on the number three qualifier in Jimmy Huff out of Loganville, Georgia in the first pair here in Sea Gas, round number one from Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. Matthew Miller with a good run right here. Is it gonna be enough to knock off? Looks like uh, Jimmy Huff has a little problem down track. So Matthew Miller takes the win right there. Next up gonna be Seth Buck in the left lane in that Gold Nugget 57. He's gonna be taking on the Buckeye Bandit right there of Dusty Baker. Baker the number 12 qualifier, but looks like Baker left a little too soon. There is the Pink Panther coming up of Art Russell. Dan Hogan unable to make the call right here. He gets a competition single in round number one. Next two up, Ben Helms in a beautiful race car. Going to be taking on Diana Casto out of West Virginia. Helms out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. And Casto going to take the win right there. One of the first round wins we've seen for her. So she comes out of the gate in 2023 with guns blazing in that quick draw Falcon of hers. Jaron Park Purdue over in the right lane versus the uh, veteran right here, Larry Cummins out of Louisiana. 
And Larry Cummins in the jumping jack flash. Falcon going to take the win right here in round number one. Ricky Jones coming up next against Ernie Smith out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Ernie Smith getting a little bit of a drop on the uh, tree right there, but too much horsepower right there for Ricky Jones as he drives around for the win. Jones driving that stud muffin car he bought a couple of years ago. Here's B.B. Brown in the left lane out of Dalton, Georgia. He's going to be taking on Tim Hall. What a big order that is for him. And Tim Hall puts him away very early. And that 67 Rambler keeps marching on here and picking up right where he left off in 2022 with a world championship, taking a first-round win. As we get ready to move over to B-Gas, there you see Sean McLemore out of Clinton, Tennessee in the fortunate son to 1967. Chevy Chevelle right there. He's supposed to be taking on Gary Smith out of Leesville, South Carolina in that 51 Henry J. He calls the chicken bone and has a good shot of it right there. My partners at DH Media. McLemore dropping down from A gas to move into B gas and it looks like it's paying off for him right here in the first round of eliminations today. He takes the win over Gary Smith. Jimmy Martin, another newcomer right there in that 55. The ditch digger in the left lane. Going to try to knock off a veteran in Todd Blackwell driving the Thunderstruck. But he has got a order he can't handle right there. That Thunderstruck takes the win. Next up, Daniel Haynes out of Holly Springs, South Carolina, and Elizabeth and Tennessee driver Kelvin Cannon. Man, you see uh, Haynes get way loose out there. He's able to keep it off the center line and off the wall and still pedals it down to a win. Big ass world champion Kobe Welch is up next, taking on Dennis Shepard. And you see that moonbeam just launch right there as Shepard gets a little out of shape and Kobe Welch takes the win in first round of B Gas. Moving on, there is Rob Walden, Robbie Walden right there in the 61 Bel Air. Going to take on another Lamar Walden race engine under the hood there for Art Copeland out of Beaufort, Georgia in the Kryptonite 1941 Studebaker. Robbie Walden looks like he's having some problems getting staged up. He gets timed out, and that is going to be an automatic win right there for Art Copeland, and one that Copeland needs in a good, strong run for him. Robbie Walden definitely disappointed in that foul up that he had on the line right there, and I'm sure that that third generation driver will learn from it as he moves back to the trailer for another time. Number one qualifier right here, Ted McKee out of uh, Lenore City, Tennessee in the Rocky Top Missile. Gene Fulton Power under the hood for him. The number one qualifier here today is he has a solo in first round, and he is not going to let that thing go easy as he drives it down there looking for lane choice as he meets up with Art Copeland coming up in the next round. Charlie Lee over there in the left-hand side going to be taking on the Carolina Moon right there of Jason Roberts out of Lexington, South Carolina. Charlie Lee in that Mustang. A formidable foe every time he goes up to the line. They are staged and gone. Charlie Lee wheels up as he leaves the line right there. And he'll streak away to the win in the eighth mile right here today at Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. Next pair up, we move into A gas. Number one qualifier, Ben Christopher. Going to take on Doyle Lynn out of Georgia. Right here near the Dalton, Georgia area is Doyle Lynn. Ben Christopher out of Bowling Springs, South Carolina. And Ben Christopher with a good launch right there. Doyle. Loses it a little bit right there. Oh, takes out a timing cone. Keeps it off the wall as Ben Christopher moves on to the next round here in A gas. Rob Walden out of Logan, uh, I'm sorry, out of Atlanta, Georgia right there in that 1933 Willis. One that was a identical copy to his father's Lamar Walden as he uh, has paid homage to him. He calls that car the Strict Nine. He's going to be taking on the Greer South Carolina racer Barry Lynn in the 65 Chevy Chevelle wagon. It's like we got some red lights on right here. Got to do a little bit of work on the track. There you see the officials shutting the guys down and bringing them back off the line. We have experienced a, a problem here today with the rain we've had and now the bright sunshine bringing up some weepers on the track through the cracks. They'll try to get that uh, safely cleaned up and dried off for our drivers as they take these wild straight axle machines down the racetrack these straight axles and high horsepower that you find here in the gas category really makes them difficult to drive as we get ready to go now. Both guys into the stage, clean and green on the lead right there. Barry Lynn gets the jump out there on Rob Walden. Walden goes over toward the wall, keeps it off the center line, but Barry Lynn going to take the win right there. Next up, another Greer racer right there, Chase Howard. He's going to be up next. He's the number three qualifier here today in A-Gas. 
67 Chevelle Super Sport for him. Par race engine underneath the hood right there, 477 cubic inches for him as he backs it up. There's his brother coming out to help back him up right there. He's going to be in the right-hand side. Supposed to be uh, taking on Kenneth Phillips. Phillips had a motor problem. Looks like he uh, may have scattered a motor, lost a couple of rods. He's not going to be able to make this round. And so a competition single for Chase Howard right here in round number one. And he's going to be on it pretty hard as he's going for lane choice. Next round, he's going to have to take on a very good racer coming out of this next matchup that we got later on today between Greg uh, Stelsey and Rick Varner. All right, and here's a story that we've been following all winter long. 2003 World Champion Pro Mod driver Mitch Stott back behind the wheel right here of the 1963 split window Corvette owned by Dave Van Alstyne out of the Florida area, and it's called a frequent flyer. If you remember, Alan Galden uh, ran this car for many years, uh, and then they brought out this new car at the end of last year. Galden did some shaking down, and unfortunately this year not going to be able to drive for Van Alstyne, and Mitch Stock agreed to get behind the wheel as the hired gun for him. He's going to be take, taking on Justin Moses out of Brazelton, Georgia, in this one in the 1956 Chevy with that wonderful Vanderpool paint job on that car. He's going to give it all he's got right here, but it looks like Mitch Stott is going to have a lot of power behind that new Corvette combination, and he'll move on to round number two. Todd Blackwell, number two qualifier in the slingshot right there in the right-hand side. Going to be taking on Leslie Horn. Leslie Horn, he has got this car duct taped together. This motor is basically duct taped together for him, this engine. Um, he has had some trouble in qualifying, has hurt his motor pretty severely, and is just here to try to see if something happens, I believe. I don't think Leslie Horn's got any chance other than to maybe take a shot at the tree and hope it holds together. So he's gonna let it all hang out. And there you see, that's just what he does. He takes a shot at the tree and that red light catches him. And Todd Blackwell, even though he washes out a little bit, keeps it off the wall and he'll move on to round number two. There's Quain Stott in the 48 Anglia, the Executioner 2. He'll be in the right-hand side, going to take on the former world champion from 2021, and that is Gabriel Burrell. Burrell, the runner-up last year in our points championship in 2022, and a former world champion, as I mentioned before, going to take on his cousin, Quain Stott, right here in the 48 Anglia. And I promise you one thing, no family loyalties right here as Quain Stott's going to try to cut him deep and cut him deep on that line because that high horsepower, that John Cozzi motor in that 31 Model A is going to be hard to overcome. Stock washes out, holds it off the center line and able to keep that car safely down the track and off of any other competitor or wall. But uh, Gabriel Burrow will march on to round number two. All right, and here's that uh, matchup we talked about before. Greg Stelly, I'm sorry, Stelts. I'm trying to get that name right. He's out of Wapaka, Wisconsin. There you see Greg's speed shop, his speed and custom shop that he runs right there, driving a 1957 Pontiac. He's brought it 14 hours down here to be with the Southeast Gasters. Says he's committed to a full season with the Southeast Gasters this year. And uh, we're awful glad to have him coming out of the great white north. He's got his hands full right here with the number nine qualifier here in Rick Varner. Stelts. Stelsey, he uh, qualified, I'm sorry, I still did not pronounce that right, Greg Stels, he qualified number eight here today. And this is a matchup of eight, nine uh, racers right here. Going to be a good competition as Varner already goes into the preset. Both guys are pre-staged right here. Stelts goes in first to the stage. Varner's in. Lights are down and they're gone. Rick Varner with a great lead right there in that beautiful car. He's called the dirt man. And he is going to take the win. So 14-hour trip going to get him a round one elimination and put on the trailer. But he's, he'll be back again, folks, as he's going to be here for the entire season.
ready for round number two right here. Beautiful shot of the big gas champ right there. Uh, Kobe Welch, there's his dad, Stacy, walking alongside the car. George Hall making a picture of that beautiful race car of theirs that won the world championship in 2022 in Seagast, the Scalded Dog. There's Art Copeland in that beautiful trip tonight, 41 Studebaker. Shut up and dance is the motto behind Ted McKee right there in the Rocky Top Missile. And dance he does as he just took that thing to a number one qualifying spot and a first round win as we get ready for second round of eliminations right here from Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. Super stock, that's gonna be round number two. Jerry Dean gonna be taking on Randy Keeper right here. Jerry Dean coming out guns blazing right here in the first race as he uh, takes a round one win. He's not gonna get any easier right here with that 1956 Pontiac Chieftain wagon. And he's gonna be facing right there Randy Keeper out of Cookville, Tennessee. There you see his office as he's getting ready to go. Good shot of Jerry Dean right there. Dean gonna be in the left-hand lane and Keeper again in that right-hand lane that he won in in round number one. Both drivers down and gone on that seven-inch Hoosier tire. And Jerry Dean gonna knock off Randy Keeper. He's making some noise right here in Superstock. As the next pair up gonna find Steve Spinney Davis. Monroe, North Carolina, facing basically his neighbor out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, in 2022 world champ Rick Varner. This one's going to be a good one. Number one qualifier, Varner, the number four qualifier here in Davis. Varner with the wheels up as he leaves the line. Davis playing a little bit of catch up at mid track. Is it going to be enough? No, Rick Varner going to take the win. The dirt man moves on to the finals here today at Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. As we move immediately into Seagas, there is Ricky Jones and Matthew Miller right there. And Ricky Jones is going to take the win in that stud muffin 62 wagon right there in the right lane. Action coming at you hot and heavy right here as the next pair comes up. That is going to be Diana Casto and Brad Wimberly. Wimberly, the number one qualifier here today in Seagas out of Atlanta, Georgia in the Southern Sizzler over there, that beautiful comet in the left-hand lane. Let's see what he can do here against the quick draw of Castro. Good drag race right here, and Wimberly's gonna take the win right there. Another good round win for Brad Wimberly as he's making some noise here early in the season. You can tell they've been doing their homework in the off season to prepare. As next up, we've got Seth Buff out of Shelby, North Carolina in that Gold Nugget 57 Nomad. He's going to be taking on Larry Cummins in the Jumping Jack Flash Wagon out of Louisiana right there in the left-hand side. The lights come down, and Larry Cummins gets a drop on him on the, the tree. Is it going to be enough to get him on the big end? Yes, it is, as he puts Seth Buff on the trailer with that full horsepower. Next up, the Pink Panther right there of Art Russell. He's got a monumental hill to climb right here if he wants to take out our world champ Tim Hall in the Scalded Dog Rambler who sits in the left-hand lane over there. All sitting patiently doing a, a short burnout right there, trying to save his tires. And there he goes as the light turns green and we get down to business. Art Russell just not enough for the Tim Hall Scalded Dog Rambler in the left-hand side. Next up there is the B-Gas World Champion. We move into B-Gas right here. No brakes here as we are trying to get this race in. We've been delayed by weather and trying to get it all in on a, on a uh, Saturday or here. And here we go with B-Gas. The Moonbeam of Kobe Welch, 65 Ranch Arrow here in the left-hand side. And as I said before, the B-Gas World Champion, as he and Daniel Haynes were in a dead heat tie for the points championship last year, but Kobe Welch, he carried that title of points leader through mo most of the year and got to that number one spot first. And by Southeast Gasser rules, he was crowned our world champion. There you see his sister Riley Welch bringing her, her brother back and getting him straight in his tracks as he is going to have a run right here that's going to be a solo by virtue of his number two qualifying spot here today. Will he let it all hang out and try to go for lane choice? Looks like he is, folks. And a good pass right there, good and straight. 
As next up, we see Art Copeland out of Buford, Georgia, in the right-hand side. Once again, that beautiful kryptonite 41 Studebaker. Lamar Walden race engine underneath the hood there for him. The man says, fear the beard. And if you ever come to a race, you got to make sure you go by the Copeland pit and check it out. Because Art Copeland usually puts some spray hair color on his uh, beard, and he's got it dyed green as well. We might be able to catch that on a camera shot right here. But if you don't, get out to Shady Side Dragway and see us on the 15th of April. You'll have a chance to see Art Copeland as he tries to take out Ted McGee right here, the number one qualifier in B-Gas and a car that's running really strong. Ted McKee with a great run right here. And he'll march on to another round victory. Next up, we're going to have there's Todd Blackwell driving that Thunderbird. They call it the Thunderstruck. Car race engine underneath the hood there for him. As you see a beautiful smoky burnout right there as he gets those Hoosiers nice and hot getting ready for this next matchup right here. He's supposed to be facing Charlie Lee. Tennessee Charlie, they call him. Lee goes in first and Blackwell follows right behind him. Blackwell having to bump the gear, uh, bump the brake just a little bit right there as he had some tire spin coming off the line. But he uh, Charlie Lee gonna take the win right there after those problems experienced by Blackwell. Sean McLemore, Clinton, Tennessee. There you see him being brought up by his beautiful backup girl right there. Melon Cam's on the hood right on the front fender well for him. Good shot in there, seeing what he's doing right inside his office. As we said, this is going to be his first year in B-Gas. He gets none other than Daniel Haynes, the Patriot Falcon, sitting over in the left-hand side right here. This is going to be a big race right here for McLemore to see if he can keep his feet wet and stay in the hunt here today in Big Gas. Good lead by both drivers. Haynes bounces just a little bit towards the center line. He's able to recover it and streak down the racetrack and put Sean McLemore on the trailer. Once again, remember, no buybacks here in the Southeast Gasters as we move to A Gas. There's the number one qualifier, Ben Christopher, right here. He'll have a solo right here by virtue of being that number one qualifier in second round of races. Napa Auto Parts right there on board with the hub saver on the back fender well for the Happy Days 66 Chevy 2 of Ben Christopher. Par race engine underneath the hood right there that has powered him in all of his racing days here in the Southeast Gas. Scott Duggins, one of the guys that uh, provides a lot of horsepower out here on this circuit for a lot of drivers along with Gene Fulton both out of the Spartanburg, South Carolina area. A little bit of tire spin for Christopher as he leaves the line right there, quickly shifts into second gear, gets that corrected, and gets down the racetrack. Pretty straight run after that start. There is the 2021 champ, as we mentioned before, Gabriel Burrell in that 31 Model A Ford with the John Cozzi horsepower underneath the hood. There you see his dad, David Burrell, right alongside under the watchful eye of that rear tire, making sure everything goes right for Gabriel Burrell and the Southern Flyer. Burrell recently a newlywed. You see his wife down there going to back him up. He's going to be taking on Mitch Stott. Now, he, he's getting two family members right here, both cousins to him. He's going to get uh, – he had Quain Stott in the first round. Now he gets Mitch Stott here in the frequent flyer for round number two. I think it's going to be a little taller order for him here with Stott as the frequent flyer has a little bit more horsepower than the executioner too. But um, we'll see if he's able to get by Mitch Stott right here. No tall, no uh, easy task as he's taking on two pro-modified world champions in his first two rounds of racing right here today. Winner of this one going to take on Ben Christopher in round number three. Stott goes into the pre-stage first. Sitting, waiting on Burrow. Burrow taking his time on getting into the pre-stage. Now you see him light it up. He goes into stage first. Now we're waiting on Mitch. Here he comes, and they're away. Mitch Stott with a big hop off the line right there, and that's going to be probably enough to do him in as Gabriel Burrow goes down the racetrack in fine fashion in that 31 Model A. Chase Howard right there, 67 Chevelle Super Sport right there. Par race engine underneath the hood for him. He's going to be over there in the right-hand lane taking on Rick Varner. 
Once again, Varner pulling double duty today. The number nine qualifier dispatched Greg Steltz in the first round. Now he gets Chase Howard in this round. Howard with a 477 cubic inch par race engine underneath the hood. Last I heard, we had a Todd Hartell power plant, a small block underneath the hood over there for Rick Varner. So I'll have to do some checking on that and make sure that's still accurate, but I think it still is. Varner like he shot out of a cannon off that line. That's gonna to be too much to overcome for Chase Howard. And Rick Varner gonna move on to the semifinal action where he'll take on the winner of this next race coming up right here of Todd Blackwell, the number two qualifier, and Barry Lynn, the number eight qualifier. Lynn with a little different lettering on that car, still called the Little Red Wagon. He's gonna be over here in the right-hand lane, Todd Blackwell in the left lane. Lynn from Greer, South Carolina. Todd Blackwell from Campobello, South Carolina. And Barry Lynn knew what he was up against, and he pushed it a little too hard and turned on the big red eye that catches him leaving early, and Todd Blackwell moves on. As we go to semifinal action right here, getting ready to come up, we'll go to Sea Gas semifinals right here. First up, Tim Hall gonna be taking on Ricky Jones. Between these two cars, there's three world championships on the line here on these three cars. Now, Ricky Jones bought this car from Leslie Horn after Horn won one world championship in it, and Horn's uh, driver, Larry Floyd, won a championship in this car as well. So Ricky Jones still got that foot and power underneath the hood, going to try to knock off the 2022 champ here in Tim Hall. Going to be a tall order as Hall is already into the pre-stage, waiting on Jones in the left-hand side. Jones lots them both up. Now they're ready to go. There the drops. And Tim Hall with a good lead as the car moved just a little bit left on the center. And he brings it back around, and you see that red light indicating the winner down there on the big end. There's number one qualifier here in Seagas today, Brad Wimberly in the Southern Sizzler Common. He sits in the left-hand side. He's going to have a competition single as Diana Casto unable to make it right here. He will move on. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was Larry Cummins that he was supposed to be taking on. And Larry Cummins in the Jumping Jack Flash could not make the call. So competition single right there for Wimberly. B-Gas we move to next right here. And there you see... Daniel Haynes in the Patriot Falcon right there. He'll be in the right-hand side. He's going to be taking on Colby Welch. Battle of the two men that took it right down to the last run at Shadyside. They made it all the way to the finals of the Shadyside, one trying to knock off the other in that championship point battle. But Colby Welch came out the victor on top of that. So here's a matchup of those two cars that met in the finals last year many times right here in our semifinals in B-Gas at our first race of the 2023 season. Mary Beth Haynes going to bring her husband Daniel into the beams. Kobe Welch got his sister bringing, Riley Welch bringing him into the beams. Good lead right there for Daniel Haynes. Is it going to be enough to overcome Kobe Welch in the left hand side? No it is not as Kobe Welch turns on the wind light right down there. Green wind light on the left-hand side and a red wind light on the right-hand side, just so you guys are familiar with everything. As we get ready for the next pair of semifinalists, that's going to be the number one qualifier, Ted McKee, taking on Charlie Lee. Both these guys out of Tennessee, so a couple of volunteer racers. Ted McKee calls his car the Rocky Top Missile, and Charlie Lee just calls his Tennessee Charlie. Fulton Power over there for Ted McKee, and uh, Charlie Lee and his dad provide the power underneath that Mustang that he uh, pilots. So Lee finally goes in and we're getting ready to go. Good leave right there by both drivers. This is a good drag race right here, folks. And the Fulton Power pulls it out at the eighth mile mark. And Ted McKee moves on to the final. We move into A gas right here. A gas as we get ready that is Todd Blackwell out of Campobello South Carolina in the slingshot 
He also pulling double duty here today, running A and B gas. Scenic Tool and Stamping right there, his company. See them on the fender well as he's going to try to take out Rick Varner right here out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. Both these guys got to be tired today with all the delays we've had and all the work they've been doing on their cars. And both of them pulling double duty in two different classes here today. The Blackwell with the par horsepower, cartel horsepower underneath the hood for the A gasser of Varner. It looks like Rick Varner going to take the win right here in the first semifinal matchup in A gas. He'll move on to the finals. There's Ben Christopher in. He's going to be taking on Gabriel Burrow right here, the number one qualifier versus the guy who won the world championship in 2021 and was the number four qualifier here today, Gabriel Burrow. So they're the one versus four here as they get ready for the second semifinals here in A gas. Nobody wanting to light that pre-stage bulb first. A little cat and mouse may be going on. Christopher goes in first. Then Gabriel. Gabriel lights up the stage and makes Ben chase him in. Christopher with a big wheel spin and goes toward the center line. I think that's all uh, Gabriel Burrow's going to need as he takes that southern flyer and flies away into the finals here today at Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. Our finals getting ready to come up right here. Super stock going to be Jerry Dean, the newcomer right here, versus Rick Varner, the veteran and the world champ from last year. These two guys getting ready to make some smoky burnouts right here for you. Varner in that shit, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dean in that Chevy too, and Varner in the 67 Camaro. There you see big, uh, Rick's big truck sales out of Kannapolis. Taylor Bright gonna back up Rick Varner here today as usually you see Savannah Varner out front, but she's not able to be here today. She's back home in Kannapolis. Jerry Dean goes and lights the pre-stage first. The world champ gonna take his time, make sure he's ready before he comes in. We getting ready to go right here. Looks like the red lights are turned on again. Maybe another weeper. Don't know what it is out on the track, folks, but there you see the red lights flashing, so they're gonna back these guys off the line, take care of whatever safety concern or uh, computer malfunction it may be. We don't know what it is. But um, now they got them back to the line. And, of course, we cut that video for you to speed things up. Lights down and gone right there as Rick Varner gets a good jump. Gets out on Jerry Dean. Can Jerry Dean play catch up right here and catch the world champ? No, he cannot. Rick Varner going to take home the big trophy here in Superstock from the first race of the season. Sea gas final. Going to find Brad Wimberly, the number one qualifier, versus the number two qualifier here today, Tim Hall. Tim Hall out of Abbeville, South Carolina, in the Scalded Dog Rambler. Going to take on that Comet out of Atlanta, Georgia, piloted by Brad Wimberly. Wimberly got to be feeling good right now as he was the number one qualifier, and he finds himself here in the finals, the first finals that he's ever made. Let's see if he can capitalize on that and knock off Tim Hall, which would be a big accomplishment. Riley Welch bringing in Tim Hall to the beams. Now we're staged up and we're green. Both drivers leaving clean and green. Tim Hall looks like he's running pretty well, but Wimberly, this is a good drag race. And at the eighth mile stripe, it is Tim Hall taking the win over Brad Wimberly right there. B-Gas final, we've got ourselves a dandy right here today with Ted McKee. He'll be taking on the defending world champ in his own right, Colby Welch. So Welch moved over. Uh, they relocated a couple of years ago. He lives in, uh, I think, Shelbyville, Tennessee now, a little further out toward the, I guess you'd call it Crossville area. Ted McKee in Lenore City, Tennessee, right outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, just a little bit northeast of that. And he's got that Fulton-powered Rocky Top missile. He was... He has really been clicking off some wins here today. Our number one qualifier. Going to try to knock off the guy who's the defending world champ right here in round, in final round action. Katie Burrell bringing up Ted McKee to the line. There you see those white boots that she sports right there. Letting him know that he is in, ready to go for pre-stage. 
Good matchup right here, folks. Everybody eyes peeled to the starting line. As Welch goes in second, we're green and gone. Good lead for Welch. This is a great drag race at half track. And that Fulton power stretches it out and drives around Colby Welch on the big end. And Ted McKee going to take home one of the big cups here today as well in B gas action. A gas final is going to find Rick Varner. He's got something that he can attempt to be monumental right here today. He could be, if he can knock off Gabriel Burrell, he could be the first man to win two different racing categories at one event. He's already won Superstock and finds himself in the finals here in A Gas. But to do that stands the way of the Southern Fly. Gabriel Burrell, one of the most consistent cars. When that car's going straight, he is definitely hard to beat with that John Cozzi power underneath the hood right there. I love this shot. Both guys with their headlights on. We're at dark. Racetrack lights are on. It's time for the stars and the Southeast Gasters to come out. And we've got two of the biggest ones right here on the starting line right now, folks. Rick Varner in the right lane. Gabriel Burrell in the left lane as we set to decide it right here at Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. Varner taking his time coming in. Good lead by both drivers. Varner with a huge jump. Oh, Gabriel Burrell tries to save it. Man, what a driving job Burrell did right there to keep it off the wall. Man, he was trying to apply that horsepower out there almost at quarter track. And man, that car took a violent turn on him. But a good job of keeping it straight as Rick Varner becomes the first man in Southeast Gasser history to win two different categories in the same day. We're going to throw it down for Winter Circles interviews right here to our colleague Mitch Stock pulling also double duty today behind the seat of that frequent flyer and then going to help us out here in Winter Circle with our winners interviews here. And there you see Rick Varner getting out now. You know, the term man of the hour is a perfect description of you this evening, brother. Reynolds, Georgia has just been a monumental race for you. Super stock win as well as an A-gas win and making you the first man in Sega history to win two categories in one race. Uh, had a lot of help and a lot of luck. <laughs> well, you know, Rick, you have probably made as many or more passes down the racetrack than any of our competitors by running these multiple classes. Do you give that to attribute your success oh, sure. to the time in the car? I look at the tree and it just helps me on the next round and I'm, I'm actually pull my helmet off of one and get in the other. And so you definitely have a crew behind you that's got everything ready, waiting. I yes. heard Danny was telling me what you had to do for yep. this two final rounds. Yep. So, I mean, without a doubt, you've got the right people in place. You've definitely got the right cars. There's no doubt there. And Rick, you ain't doing too bad yourself. You know, I know that your trip to Reynolds, Georgia up here, you couldn't have been thinking I'm going to know Yeah. I did think it. Did you? Okay. Until I made my first qualifier pass. <laughs> I seen y'all's numbers and I said, man, I'm in trouble. Yeah. And uh, Danny and Bully and uh, Todd and, his, and my friend uh, Tony, they worked and worked all day and it was just, I had a good light on it. And that's what wins races. Rick Barner, congratulations, buddy. This is a victory here as well as this is a championship race. And broke the record. That was forgotten in all of these other accomplishments. That's right. Congratulations, Tim Hall, my brother. Not only are you the 2022 Seagas champion, but man, talk about a way to carry that trend on. First race of the season here in Reynolds, Georgia, taking another win and quite convincing. Wasn't an easy day, baby. I mean, we were working on this thing more this weekend than we ever have since we started. We broke the clutch disc on the first run and then the ship fell apart on the second run. And we got all that fixed and finally made a decent run and keep one. And run a good one. And then had to run a bunch of tough drivers. You know? It's not easy. You know, no, it's not easy, but there's a word for what you did, and I think it's called perseverance, Tim. I and mean, you know, all of your life, I know you and your whole family has persevered, and that shows today. Never give up, never quit, keep plowing, and buddy, it will come. Today, the Lord, give us good weather. It looked like we wasn't even going to have it. And then we get to come out here and have a great day. You know, and I think there was a fair number of folks here watching Chuck Bullock. We had a lot to stop by and talk to us. So it was good. a good race for the fans, a good race for us. 
Thank you, everybody, to help. There's a lot of people behind. Well, it was definitely a good race for you guys, and yes, we had a lot of people hanging out here watching today. That's great. But the point of it is, Jim, you know, what a way to start a 2023 championship and could potentially be a back to back champion, which we still have not had. Yeah, I got one of the smallest like that. Rick Martin's trying to keep the same thing. He races in the class before me, so <laughs> it could come down if we both have good luck. You know, do well. It could come down to who can You can only control what you do, my friend. Exactly right. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, Tim Hall, congratulations to you, the entire Scalded Dog team. I know without a doubt it was a good team effort. Congratulations, brother. What a way to start the season. Thank you. Ted McKee, buddy, I know you got something real wild to say about today. Let me hear it. What is it, Ted? We've been through it today. I'm telling you. This thing was popping and cracking. Uh -huh. Leaned down on me. We got the big rear ends out of it. And luckily, got by that right now. I need some Tennessee wisdom words like Yahoo or something. I know you got something in there, Ted. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> As I say, buddy, what a day it's been. You're telling me that you're up here, the rear end is finished. You got one round and that was all in there yeah. left, which, by the way, is handy because that was all you need. That's all I needed. And then you got old Jim yeah. Harris and you know, three other guys. You know, Good Jim and Bill. They hit the ball. Now, Terry had to work for him being here. Well, you might want to leave them working the next time. That's right. We done pretty good today. <laughs> you did. Yes, sir. Well, Terry, I, I'm sorry. To have you come out here and win the first race of the season, what kind of advance does that give you going into the next race? And are you planning to run a full season with this year? God willing, I'm going to run a full season. That gives us a lot more knowledge to get this thing right. We've got the clutch things to work out for us right now. So. Working with you. Anytime you win the first race of the season, buddy, that right there gets the head start on all of us. That's right, it does. Well, Ted, good job today, you and the entire crew. Have a good one. They're going to take some pictures. All right, thank you, bud. Get in there, boys. Rick Martyr, if I didn't know better, I'd swear I'd already talked to you one time tonight. You know, what is this? Two wins in one night? How does this happen? They just got lucky and got a good crew. You keep telling me the same thing every time. Is it never going to change? I doubt it. Would you take luck over skill any day? Any day. <laughs> I'll take that luck. I have plenty tonight. Well, you may have had some good breaks, but you know you got to be there to collect them. That's true. I, I was on the tree. I did, my, I did my job tonight. Good for you, brother. So now you can kind of take that stuff home and tell the crew they need to step up a little bit because you're tired of dragging their weight around. <laughs> no, they ain't like that. No, they take care of me. <laughs> Bully and Danny, man, they just stay on me. And Todd, they work all the time on my stuff. And Todd, I got to thank Tyler and Tommy. They, they help me at the shop all the time. I know you've got a definitely a devoted, dedicated crowd of people, Rick, and, and God bless you for that, no doubt about it. Without question, God's been good to you today. God's been real good. He is. God is good, Rick. Well, you know, again, we're going to reiterate the fact that you are the first man to ever win two categories in one event, obviously. And, you know, you did set the record in Superstock, so I have no idea what's left of you, Rick. How do you capitalize on this? Oh, we just keep racing. See what comes out of it. Just win them all. Another good round at a time. Round at a time. Maybe double up on a Superstock Championship. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. And I want to, I want to win more trophy. Kenneth Phelps. <laughs> well, you better get started, because Kenneth, 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 Kenneth Phelps got a lot of them. So you better get started, Rick, buddy. I cannot say congratulations to you. Enough. This is an unprecedented event, and Rick Carter, you the man. You know, it'll be perfect. Thank you, man. Thank you.